I'm a park ranger at a national park. I won't say which one, but if you've been here before, you might recognize it based on the description. I used to give tours in the large, sprawling cave that makes up one of the main features of our park, but a week ago, we had an incident occur which led us to close it indefinitely. I was there that night, and I know the reason why. I always count the people in my tour group through the tour, even more frequently on the tour I was giving that day, where it's a bit more strenuous and goes through the undeveloped portions of the cave. Since it sort of acts as a 4 hour introduction to caving, you tend to get the more adventurous sorts. Most people are respectful, responsible, and careful, but as always, there are some exceptions. You'd think it'd be common sense to not wander off alone in a dark cave, but you'd be surprised. For example, I had one guy yell at me recently when I tried to prevent him from wandering off away from the group. He told me he could handle it, he had been hiking for years, and he had a satellite phone so he'd be fine. I decided it wasn't worth arguing with him about how satellite phones won't work 200 feet below ground. So I just heavily implied that leaving the tour group would result in a permanent ban from every park in the country. It's not true, but it kept him safe and with the group. I was also especially focused because starting that day, the tour route bypassed one of the usual tunnels, which was closed for conservation efforts, and took a detour through an area that hadn't been on the tour route for years. Anyways, back to counting the group. We limit this tour to 10 people, and we make sure there are no overlapping tours that follow the same route. In addition to making sure we don't lose anyone, it helps prevent people from either mistakenly or intentionally joining a different tour group than the one they started with. Preventing a potentially dangerous and expensive search and rescue operation for a missing person that's not really missing. I had a full group, it was the last tour of the day, and it was going really well at first. I had some repeat attendees that I recognized. Everyone was careful, paid attention, and asked good questions. The whole group stuck with me at all times. When we went through the detour section, the smell hit me, earthy, but with an undertone of decay. There was an intersection on that path that forked off far into the darkness, and the smell seemed stronger down there which made me really uncomfortable. I let everyone go ahead of me to stop in the next, more open space, because something about that place gave me a really bad feeling. I counted the one person who had somehow managed to end up behind me, and then sighed in relief. We had all 11 people. That wasn't right, I should only have 10. Or maybe it was. I suddenly felt my confusion and concern melt away, so I shrugged and moved onwards. The rest of the tour went great, until we were almost done and approaching the elevators. We lost power. We had our headlamps so we weren't in absolute blackness, but it was still jarring to be unexpectedly thrown into darkness in the part of the cave that usually has full lighting. Luckily the backup generator came on in under a minute. We have some pretty intense thunderstorms up here, and although this had never happened to me while I was on a tour, it had happened to a couple of fellow rangers. The issue, though, is that neither elevator seemed to work even after the generator turned on. I pushed the button, but nothing happened. The natural cave entrance is too small for most people to fit through, so the elevators were the only feasible way in and out. I wasn't too panicked at that point yet. The elevator area was one of the few areas in the cave where you could actually make and receive phone calls. We have phone line laid there for that very reason. I made a call to upstairs, I let them know about the issue, and did my best to calm the group down while I told them the plan. Everyone was dressed warmly enough to be able to withstand the 50-ish degree weather for a while longer. We don't allow food or drinks in the cave, but I was hoping we'd be out before that it became an issue. It's funny, I have always worried about losing someone, but since we have no overlapping tours, I'd never even given a thought to what I'd do if I ended up with an extra person. So, when there were 12 people when I turned around to do a count again, I was a bit at a loss of what to do. I counted multiple times, and it was more apparent that we had two more people in our group now than we came in with. Did you lose your group? I asked broadly, waiting hopefully for two people to speak up and say yes they got separated and joined us, but they all stared at me in silence. I searched the faces of the people that I'd spent the past four hours with, and there wasn't anyone that seemed new. Everyone I looked at, I felt like I could remember their name, and walking with them for the past few hours. Maybe I was losing it, I thought at the time, maybe we'd made an exception. After a while, I called upstairs for an update. They were going to try and get at least some sort of emergency fix in to get everyone out. They expected it to be at least another hour or so. 
I turned around and filled the group in. There was a bit of the chorus of sighs and groans I had been expecting, but there was also something else. A thirteenth person hovering at the edge of the group. Before I had time to even fully process that development, one of my tour members suddenly darted away from the group clustered at the elevators and she ran back into the darkness of the cave. I dug out my spare elevator key. You have to have a key to operate these so no one can go up or down without a ranger. Handed it to one of my repeat attendees I knew I could trust and ran after her. I shouted back at the others to stay put and monitor the phone and to go up without me if needed. I tried to keep her in my light, but she was so nimble. She ducked, weaved, and navigated like an expert. I struggled to keep up even in the portions of the trail I frequented almost daily. I was seriously worried for her safety. No matter how familiar you are with the area, running through a cave, much less in the dark, is never safe. I wouldn't have been running myself if I didn't need to in order to keep up with her. Suddenly, she was gone, and I realized I was somewhere I hadn't been before. I was approaching a wall with just a small crevice that opened to the other side. I didn't see her in it, or anywhere else for that matter. It was as if she had become one with the darkness itself. That was when it first hit me. She had no headlamp, helmet, knee pads, or shoes. How the hell did I not notice that when I was looking over the group for outliers? I looked around frantically as the fear of her being potentially lost deep within the part of the cave that I was less familiar with sunk in. Just as I was debating my next move, I saw her again. She had somehow ended up in between me and the way I had come. She was far enough away from me that she was partially hidden in the shadows. My relief was short-lived though, when I realized for the first time that her eyes reflected in the dim light a reddish-orange hue, like an animal's, like something that evolved in the dark. Fear turned into dread and I instinctively moved as if to back away as she approached, but after a step back, I was against the wall. I felt for the crevice and tried to slowly walk sideways against the wall so it was behind me. There was nowhere else to go and I hoped I'd fit. As she emerged further into my light, I noticed features that I somehow hadn't caught before. Her mouth was too wide. Her eyes were small and perfectly round with wide pupils. What I had before interpreted as loose-fitting caving clothes were layers drooping flesh upon closer scrutiny. What I was looking at was not a person at all. Seriously. How had I not noticed before now? Minutes ago I could have sworn this was a youngish girl with mousy brown hair that I'd been walking around with her for hours, known her by name, her name was. I realized I couldn't remember. It lunged at me and I did the best thing I could think of at the time. I shoved myself sideways as far into the crevice as I could go. It managed to take a decent sized chunk out of my arm and I squeezed myself in further. Eventually it hissed and faded back into the darkness. I had a brief moment of reprieve where the panic faded. I carefully focused on trying to squeeze back out, holding my breath, trying to shrink my profile. That's when I realized I could distinctly hear something else breathing behind me, on the other side. Suddenly, I was being pulled backwards by something. It was tearing into my jacket and the arm that was pinned behind me, but the opening was too thin. Eventually, it appeared to give up and the only breathing I could hear was my own. I tried to take a deep breath and for the first time realized just how tight the rock was around me. I couldn't even fill my lungs. What I had just encountered was quickly becoming a close runner-up, but this was my literal worst nightmare. How long would it be until someone could find me, much less help me? I tried not to focus on thoughts of dying, wedged here in the darkness. Each shallowed, panicked breath just served to remind me of how tightly I was stuck. I reminded myself that panicking wouldn't help. I just had to focus on getting out. It took what felt like an eternity to squeeze back out. By then, whatever was hunting me appeared to be long gone. I had a slew of cuts and abrasions both from the rocks and the creature, but the slick blood from the injuries had at least aided me in sliding out. It took me longer to walk back, much longer, as I crawled, ducked, and stepped back, stiff, bloody, and exhausted. I was worried about my group. I was tempted to call out, to let my group know I was on my way, to warn them but I was hesitant to draw any attention to my location or possibly have anyone from the group stray from the others to try and find me. Whatever the creature was, it seemed unwilling or unable to attack all of us at once, so I held on to the hope that they stayed together. As I approached, I heard the sounds eating off in the distance. It was hard to gauge from where but I could hear the aggressive smacking and chewing of someone long hungry. 
I sighed. I wasn't looking forward to having that you aren't supposed to bring food in here conversation with a group that was already hungry, tired, and unhappy from having had been stuck in a cave for hours. I decided that as long as they were safe, I'd just deal with the repercussions and clean up without saying a word. I heard the phone ringing in the distance. It continued to echo, unanswered. By the time I got to the elevator, they were all gone. I called to them, but got no response. I pressed the button and could hear the elevator moving. I tried to wait to check upstairs before panicking. They'd probably already gone up. From the elevator, I took a last look into the darkness as the doors closed. Multiple pairs of red-orange eyes reflected the lights from my headlamp far in the distance. I suddenly panicked at the thought of if they could figure out how to use the elevator. I pictured them hunting our hikers on secluded trails or through the small town outside of the park. But I calmed myself, remembering no, they'd need a key. As the elevator rose, I tried working out in my mind how the hell I'd explain that we needed to close the trails to my supervisor without sounding insane. When I came up the elevator, my coworkers and supervisor were waiting. From the moment the doors opened, they fretted over my injuries and told me they were worried when the tour group came up without me and were working on sending an initial response team to search for me. So the whole group made it out okay. I confirmed. I needed to hear it. You did great. Everyone's safe and accounted for. They were in good shape, so we sent them home a while ago. My supervisor smiled. All 16 of them. Thank you to my superfans, Sweet Black Swan, Tacey, and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.